So we're picking back up on our part two of our relationship presentation. And just to recap what we've already covered in our first one, we talked about having intentionality and being clear in your intentions toward someone of the opposite gender. Uh, we also talked about being willing to take those God-given risks, to take the risk to love, to have a relationship and to risk yourself uh, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. We also talked about uh, having a balance between being all seriousness um, and all fun. You've got to have that balance so that you can actually have an enjoyable relationship. We talked about also being secure in Christ and how important that is to attract someone who is also secure in Christ, working on your own spiritual growth. And the sooner that you give yourself to Christ and become that secure person, the less baggage you're going to have to bring into a relationship to work, to work through. Um, another thing we talked about was the need for accountability. Um, accountability with God as far as how you're conducting your relationship, accountability with spiritual mentors in your life, um, and accountability if you're struggling with addictions. The real principle that we want you to take away is that every relationship is a success if you have Christ at the center. It doesn't matter if it ends in marriage or if it ends in you parting ways and wishing each other the best. God can use every relationship to grow you more like him if you're putting that as your focus. Yes. Now, before we get back into our story, let's just pause and pray. Father, we thank you so much for your guidance that you give to each person who seeks you. And we pray for those that are seeking your guidance, who are looking either anticipation for a relationship or maybe already in one. That You might just show them what steps to take as we continue to share that there might be relevancy for this time that we are living in as Christians. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, last, time, last segment, we were finishing our story where the fact that we were, had spent 10 months apart, that Glesney had sent me an email saying, you know, I'm actually open to uh, consider a relationship again. I didn't um, actually say that. I said more that I was open to communication and just tying up loose ends. Just yeah. kind of opening it up, but I didn't but say, the was let me get into a relationship. No, and that, that was the one thing that came across to me is that she wasn't trying to be a, a leader and be like overly desperate or something like that to get back into a relationship. She was just being open of where she was at and opening up the door, potentially something more once again. And that's how I took it. And it's a risk to show yourself to be available and potentially open. Um, it's a, it's, we've seen throughout scripture, there's this principle that we are to be co laborers with God in everything. And yet there's some people that when it comes to relationships, they don't make themselves available. Um, they, they hide themselves away and they just expect for some magic to occur in a spouse just to appear in front of them. And 99% of the time, that's not what happens. Many times it takes a person to be open to place themselves in areas and locations where God can bless so that then God can bless them and bring someone into them, bring someone into their life. Um, so we know several people have applied this principle to their unique situation. They have prayed about it, have taken uh, direct and specific steps to make themselves more available, more open in the world of relationships. These steps have included maybe intentionally moving to an area where they might be able to be more available, where they might network with other young people, whether that's conferences, events, or actually physically moving. Now, we don't know what, God, what path God may have in store for you, but we know that he will bless your efforts as you seek to cooperate with him, even when it comes to the topic of relationships. And ladies, I know you might be thinking, oh my, that sounds very forward and bold to move somewhere intentionally with the thought of looking for a Christ-like spouse, a future spouse, or sending an email or starting any kind of conversation. Uh, it might feel too forward for some of you, but it's really important to not just hold yourself up and get yourself so busy that a guy doesn't even see a space for him in your life. And when you're not open and showing that uh, you are available in like an emotional sense, a guy is going to be less likely to even pursue you um, or even find you if you're so hold, hold away that the likelihood of you crossing paths with someone who actually is going to be like, oh, hey, I want to get in a relationship with you right now and we're the right match, um, that's very slim. So you want to just make sure that you are open um, and you reciprocate. If someone starts to show an interest in you, 
make sure that you don't just shut them down. So having said that, going back to our story, I had put myself out there, I sent that email, and now I was just kind of nervous about what would happen and what Ryan would say. Um, that week that I waited for an answer seemed like an, an eternity. I just was waiting and waiting and waiting, just didn't know what he was going to say, how he was going to respond. Um, and I'll let Ryan kind of share a little bit about that response. So I remember getting that email where Glossy was sharing where she was at and just realizing, oh, the, the door actually is still open. Like, I wasn't even considering Glossy for a while just because she had closed the door and in all fairness, I couldn't continue to knock on a door that was obviously closed. But when I saw that door being opened again, it made me think back on all the positives of Glossy and, and the potential that was there and the questions I did have that weren't fully able to be answered since we had stopped our relationship. And so I remember reaching out to her and, and saying, okay, I am interested to continue a dialogue and maybe see if something could happen in the future. And conveniently, I was having a mission trip coming up to Haiti with my class, my physical therapy class. And as a result of that, Glessney was able to jump on board and come along. And it was just provided a natural time that we're able to interact once again in person and just use that time to say, okay, is this something we should consider again or not? Yeah, I had actually heard about Ryan's physical therapy mission trip from his cousin, who's a close friend of mine, and she was like, hey, Ryan's doing this mission trip, and you should come along, we need some nurses, and she's a nurse, I'm a nurse. So I was like, oh yeah, you know, my mind was like, oh yeah, I love travel, love missions, I'd be down, but inwardly I'm, I had this secret motive to just like go back and be around Ryan again, and see if there was potential for anything to develop again because my heart was open to that at that time where I hadn't been before. Mm -hmm. and during that mission trip, we sat close to each other. We went on uh, walk walks together, mostly in groups. Um, and to the naked eye, it probably didn't appear that there's something between us, but there definitely was something just starting to churn under the waters. Um, and it, I left that experience with my eyes open being like, uh, this actually still could be a very real potential. There still is so much I do respect and appreciate about her. And I wasn't turned off in the least by what I saw. And so as we left Haiti, I, I was definitely interested in the potential of a relationship, but I just wasn't sure exactly where Ryan was at at that time. Um, didn't know how he was feeling. But he did ask if he could swing by our house on his way out to Reno for a clinical internship. And it wasn't really on the way because he was going from Michigan to Reno, Nevada, and we live way up in the panhandle of Idaho. And so it wasn't really on the way, but he said he wanted to swing by on the way. So I was like, well, you know, that does feel like he's being intentional about taking time to come and see me. So I started to wonder, like, what is he thinking? And this time around, we did have more intentionality, as Glossy said, in our relationship. We didn't have all the overly strict boundaries that just wasn't healthy for our individuality and where we were at. This time, we spent several hours each week talking on the phone. Um, and very soon I found myself driving out. And I had spent a lot of time praying, journaling, trying to figure out my thoughts, my emotions. And I had the calm assurance that this time God would show us specifically if this was to move forward or not. Um, so I got to her house. We started interacting. It was going a lot more smoothly than it had been. And um, I was there for an extended weekend. And on Friday morning, I remember praying and feeling God nudge me, say, okay, today will be the day that you'll have more clarity. And it was almost immediately after that that Glessney's dad knocks on the door and says, hey, can I talk to you about something? So he comes into the room and we start dialoguing. And he's like, you know, I just feel like Glessney is at the place that she might be open to getting to back into a relationship. And I feel that you probably should take some initiative and, and ask and just have an open dialogue before you leave. And I took that, I was like, okay, God, this is, this is pretty clear. So we went for a walk and I had this conversation with Glassney, trying to figure out, just expressing where I was at, and then also trying to figure out where she was at. And she wasn't jumping, just being like, I want to get back in a relationship. Instead, she was saying, um, yeah, I have, like, I'm, st I'm thinking about that, but I'm not quite there. And I left that conversation being like, okay, God, like, 
I feel, felt you nudging that this was going to be the day, and yet we just had this conversation where she's not at the place that I'm at. Um, but I kept that in the back of my mind. I submitted it to God. And right as the day was wrapping up, we were out on the couch, and we were just chatting back and forth. And um, in the very last sections of the day before the day was over, she said, you know, I think I'm at that place uh, just to be able to be comfortable to be called your girlfriend once again. And I was like, wow, God is faithful. And so we didn't have like crazy moments where it's like, okay, God is for sure, for sure, for sure leading. We had these little nudges along the way that God was showing his will through this. Yeah, so as we started to explore this second stage or second relationship, really, um, we realized that, like Ryan said, we needed to be more intentional. We needed to prioritize our relationship better. And I realized that in the first relationship, I had been crowding my life too full. Um, I had too much going on and I pretty much crowded Ryan out of my life and wasn't prioritizing our relationship. So I decided that the second time around, I was gonna be more intentional about trying to prioritize time to talk, time to be together in person. We decided that we were gonna to try to see each other in person once a month, and we pretty much did. Um, I think there was maybe a five or six week uh, gap one time, but pretty much the entire time we were able to stick with that, and it really helped our relationship to have more of that face-to-face. -face. I realized I needed more of that in-person time because our relationship had been so long distance for so much of the time. Um, and so we just committed to doing that, having FaceTime calls more than just texting or just calling, just to have the closest we could to being in person even when we weren't in person. And we also realized that there wasn't a cookie cutter approach when it came to relationships. Many people like to fit a certain relationship uh, model into a box and say, okay, this is, has to be how it is for, for a relationship to be successful and to be honoring to God. And we don't want to get it wrong. There are principles to follow in the scripture and the spirit of prophecy. There definitely are principles. But there's also a lot of area where there's a, an individuality that each relationship can and should have because each individual is unique. Each relationship can be unique. And God is a God that is very individualized for each person as well. And it's not the fact that, I mean, we don't want to say, okay, there is the one person out there for you. Um, it's more the principle that God can bring you to somebody, but it'll take some work. It'll take wrestling in prayer. It'll take thinking things through. It'll be saying, okay, God, what, how can I apply the principles to my unique journey that you have me on in this relationship? Now for us, as you've seen, our relationship definitely had ups and downs, probably more downs than ups uh, prior to marriage. But at the same time, we wouldn't change that because it was that wrestling with God that helped us draw closer to him. Mm -hmm. As much as it would have been nice for God to say, this person is the one for you, move forward, very clearly, he didn't. And I think that was intentional because it made us pursue him more each and every stage of the way that was so much more worth it. Because as much as God wants to give you an amazing spouse, to give you an amazing job, he's more he has more uh, importance focused on your relationship with him. Because at the end of the day, where is your relationship with him? And he will use whatever means to draw you closer to him. For us, that was definitely a big part of our relationship. And we are glad that he did that. And we're glad for where we're at today. Yeah, just to piggyback off what Ryan said, there were times that I just wanted God to just write the name of the guy I was supposed to marry in the sky. And I would plead for that. And I was like, why wouldn't God do something like that? Just give me a very clear sign. But like Ryan said, I realized that I would never have learned the lessons of trust and surrender that I did through that time period because of that. Uh, so many people, they just want that, you know, handbook on how to have a successful Christ Christian relationship and how to get from point A of meeting the perfect someone to point Z of marrying the perfect someone. And really, like we've said before, there isn't a perfect somebody. All of us are human. We all have our growth areas. The most important thing to do is to realize that you need Christ in your relationship, in your life, and to realize that love takes risks and risks that you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to allow yourself to open up emotionally and to engage uh, before even you know 100% this one is 
the one for you. Um, so we just encourage you to follow these principles uh, that are laid out in inspiration in the Bible um, and pray like never before when you're considering a relationship or you're in a relationship with someone of the opposite gender. I claimed this promise so many times from Isaiah 30, 21. It says, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. And I realized that by asking God to write the name of the guy I was supposed to marry in the sky, I was taking away that faith factor. And this verse in Isaiah says that God will give you that direction when you are moving forward, when you are taking a step in a direction. It's like a boat. Um, the rudder is useless unless the boat is actually moving. And so, and same with our walk with Christ. We have to make some step, take some steps, make some action happen in our lives in order for him to help guide us with that rudder, which is his word and his Holy Spirit and different impressions, people talking to us. So as I took some steps forward to explore this relationship, then God could guide and say, hey, this is the right way or turn a different way. So that was just something that I really clung to during that time. Now this time around in our relationship, we did set, we were a lot more intentional, as we said, um, not only in just more communication, but also more face-to-face -face time, where once a month we did try to make that time. But still the long distance side of it, it's hard. And for those who do long distance and succeed at it, props to you, because it is rough compared to being in person. But it did allow for those times of deeper submission to God through the up and down journey that we had. And God grew us through that process. Yeah. We were blessed, though, that Ryan was able to get one of his two-month internships during his last year of physical therapy school out in our area. And so we had two months of in-person time together from about March to May um, in 2018. And so that was a huge blessing to us, just get to see each other in the raw and real aspects of life when they're when you know we were tired uh, when we were stressed just to see how we responded to just life in general and just get to do fun things together to get to spend time together see each other you know in the day in the day out mm -hmm. but another thing that we really enjoyed doing during that time was having devotional time together some shared devotional time after our personal time together um, and so we just really spent moments searching the Word of God together, praying together, and that was really spiritually bonding. Um, of course, I was still struggling with, you know, the insecurities, uh, with questions about whether this was the right thing, whether Ryan was really the one for me. Um, I was still not feeling a lot of chemistry, and I just didn't want to lead him on. So I was really praying about it, and I tried to be really real and open with Ryan about that, uh, which was good, but it also, I know, caused a lot of, you know, extra difficulties yeah. in our relationship. Which was part of the struggle, is that I didn't want her to force her emotions to make the emotions come, um, but I also wanted her just to be open and honest, and so it was just that struggle of trying to figure out where's the balance in that, um, and really saying, okay, God, are you leading here? If so, what's going on with this as well? And so spending more time in prayer and focusing on that. Yeah, and as I was struggling with these feelings of, you know, lack of chemistry, I had also been struggling for a long time with feelings of insecurity regarding my body image. Because um, I'd had a lot of health struggles, I weighed a lot more than I do now, and just there was a lot of things going on inside that were causing me to have those insecurities that were coming out and were limiting my ability to feel anything toward Ryan because I was just shutting myself off. Uh, but Ryan was so patient with me and so loving and kind through this whole thing. He <laughs> was always affirming me, even though I was having all these negative thoughts and feelings about myself and feeling like I was unattractive. Um, but he always made me feel loved and cherished. And of course, you know, this progressed gradually through our relationship to more, you know, bold expressions, obviously. But he still reminds me every day that I'm a beautiful queen, even when I don't feel like it. And it's been such a testimony to me of the love of God and how God loves us. He never makes us feel ugly or unattractive. He's pursuing us. Um, and like it says in 1 John, 
it says we love because he first loved us and that's how I see it um, my relationship with God God loved us first and because of that we have love for him and same with Ryan he pursued me with his love even when I wasn't feeling that chemistry or love toward him and it was just a beautiful picture of what God wanted to do um, in my life between me and him um, there's this quote from Ellen White that says Christ's love is deep and earnest flowing like an irrepressible stream to all who will accept it there is no selfishness in his love in this heaven-born love is an abiding principle in the heart it will make itself known not only to those we hold most dear and sacred relationship but to all in, with whom we come in contact it will lead us to bestow little acts of attention to make concessions to perform deeds of kindness to speak tender, true, encouraging words. It will lead us to sympathize with those whose hearts hunger for sympathy. And Ryan really did that for me. He drew out my heart by those kind, tender attentions, by nurturing that relationship with me of trust, of love. Um, and I've just really started to blossom under that over time. Um, and it's the same with our relationship with God. God wants that relationship with us. He loves us. He cherishes us. He affirms us. He doesn't want us to feel like we are unattractive to him because we aren't. We are the most prized possession that he has. And he wants to develop that relationship of love with each one of us. He wants to develop it with you. And he wants us to build on that foundation in our relationship with him and then also to have that overflow to our relationships with other people. And it's a two-way street. Uh, ladies, guys have insecurities too. Um, you can be one of the greatest tools that God can use to reach out and to remind them you know, they still are loved and cherished by God. My, having the amazing wife that I do, I'm very aware of how helpful it's been in my journey of personal growth to have someone there who supports me, who loves me, who helps me become a better leader, who overall just makes me feel like a million bucks. And we found that God sourced love that is prioritizing each other, prioritizing your relationship with God, it only deepens with time. It's a beautiful thing that we can be the hands and feet of Christ, reaching out, loving and ministering, and helping the other person overcome various issues in their life, such as insecurities. Now, while moving to, while my two month clinical rotation time definitely helped my thoughts in the matter, we still weren't 100% sure that God was calling us together. I realized that more time together had to happen because for us, long distance wasn't the greatest thing for our relationship. And so I made the decision to move out west. That's a decision based in a lot of prayer because I knew that I didn't want to just move just for the relationship. I've seen what happens when people do that. They move to an area where they probably don't want to be. They do a job where they probably not their ideal job. And if the relationship falls apart, they're stuck somewhere without the friend circle too. And they feel all alone. So for me, I knew that it wasn't just for a relationship that I'd be moving out to Idaho. I love the West. And I knew even if the relationship didn't move out here, didn't happen, pan out like I thought it would, that I'd still be okay. And more importantly, I saw God's leading in it. I ended up with an amazing job, so amazing in fact, that I started to wonder if God just used the relationship to bring me out here just for the job alone. But thankfully, God had other things in mind as well. Yes, and when Ryan had originally started looking at jobs out here, it was during that time when he was here for two months. And I was open to it because we definitely did better when he was here in person. I opened up more emotionally. And it tended to be in the times of absence where I would kind of pull back again and get cold. And so during that time together, those two months, I was like, okay, yeah, that could be a good thing if he moved out here and we could spend more time together. But then over the summer when we didn't see each other as much, I started to get cold feet again. And I started to have more questions about our relationship, wondering if we should move forward. And I didn't want the pressure of Ryan moving out here to pursue a relationship with me. And I almost actually broke up again with him because I was like, I just don't want him moving out here because of like my our relationship and hoping that we're gonna get married and what if it doesn't happen and I don't want to be pressured to be like, oh, I need to make it work because he came out here. So I was just very real and vulnerable with him and just told him, hey, 
I, I'm not sure what's happening with this relationship. I'm still not sure that it's 100% where God's leading, and I just don't want you to move out here for the wrong reasons. Yeah, and I totally understood that, which is why I constantly remind her, said, hey, even if this doesn't work out, this is still a move that I want to make, and a move that I feel like God is calling me to. And it was a decision that was bathed in prayer. We're told that if men and women are in the habit of praying twice a day before they contemplate marriage, they should pray four times a day when such a step is anticipated. And that's because it is a big decision. It does need to be bathed in prayer, and every single step along that journey could lead one way or the other. But I'm glad I moved out here because otherwise it wouldn't have worked out. More importantly, I'm glad that I was following God's will for my life in listening and praying and thinking things through and following that still small voice. So spending that time together, it was needed to make our relationship grow. Um, as the months went on, both of us became to become more at the place of peace and we had more balance in our relationship than ever before. We were able to spend in quality quality time together, we're able to do things together, we're actually able to get to know the person and their interests and their hobbies and find out different areas that we were similar in and difference and respect those differences too. Mm -hmm. um, and that helped a lot with our relationship. Yeah, one of the huge benefits of Ryan moving to Idaho was that time that we were able to spend together. Both of us really thrive off of quality time and just being in person was really beneficial to just getting to know the other person, seeing them again in the day in, day out. Um, and this time it wasn't just a short period. Ryan had moved out here for good. And so I got to really see him um, in real life settings, starting a new job, having the stress of that, um, and just getting to interact with each other, um, do a little more of the dating activities that we hadn't really done before. Um, getting to go on some outings together and just spend real time together. Um, like I already mentioned, the quality time of having devotions together also was really strong, uh, helped to strengthen our relationship. And for Christians, it almost goes without you know, saying that we need to have Christ at the center of our relationships, but so many people tend to miss that very important part. And I've realized through this whole journey that God is the origin of true happiness, and He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be fulfilled, and we don't need a relationship to have that joy and fulfillment. However, God did also create relationships to be joyful and to um, create a partnership where we can serve Him better. And so I just have learned that God has so much in store for us if we'll surrender to Him, and that was something that continued to be evident to us as we uh, continued to get to know each other in person. A couple weeks ago, I was in the forest uh, locally and I was wandering around, totally my mistake that I was out there by myself. Um, and I got royally lost. I knew I wouldn't end up in big trouble, but it was a maze, trail after trail, intersected, and I was wandering around. And the thought struck me as I was wandering around trying to search for my way back, thinking, wouldn't it be nice to have a guide who could be there beside me, who knew the trails, who said, hey, this is the best trail to take. Um, and I didn't and I, I did make it back. But that's the fact of life, is that you're on a journey. We're all on a journey. And the journey has different twists and turns. Now, for those that aren't Christians, you might end up on paths that will not lead you in the best place, and you don't know that, because each path on us looks the same. But when you are following God, you have that guidance, that counselor, who's there bes beside you saying, okay, this is the way, this is the path, and you'll end up in a place that you'll be so much more happy and filled in life as a result of listening to God. I like this quote, which comes from uh, Fundamentals of Christian Education, which says, many are sailing in a dangerous harbor. They need a pilot, but they scorn to accept the much needed help, feeling they are competent to guide their own ship, and not realizing that it is about to strike a hidden rock that may cause them to make a shipwreck of faith and happiness. Unless they are diligent students of the word, talking about the Bible, they will make grave mistakes, which will mar the happiness and that of others, both for the present and for the future life. And how much more do we need God's guidance than when it comes to relationships? So if you are trying to search, what is the next step? Have God at the forefront of everything that you do. And we know that he will guide. It might not be the clear specific way, but he will guide. And you will end up in a way better place as a result. So... 
going back to our story, Ryan had moved out here and things were definitely going better, but I was still struggling to know for sure. And <laughs> this is just the theme of our relationship is me struggling. But anyway, um, I was just still like not sure if I was feeling true chemistry and just wasn't wasn't sure. But uh, as the months progressed, I got the feeling that Ryan was thinking of proposing. And so I started really thinking about it more and like, okay, am I ready for this? And I wasn't actually very sure. I was, wasn't 100% sure yet that I would want to say yes. And I was like, okay, well, I can't get to this situation and not know what I'm going to say. And about a week before, I had this conversation with a really close friend of mine who has a very similar personality and kind of went through similar struggles and thoughts in her relationship before she got married. And she was sharing with me some of her experiences and how she kind of came to this same, like, brink of the, on the edge, teetering back and forth. Was she going to go jump into engagement and marriage or was she going to pull back again? And after talking with her, uh, we realized that both of us um, had this kind of like perfect dream guy in our heads um, that really no, never existed and will never exist because nobody's perfect. We're all human. And I was holding Ryan up to this impossible standard and being really hard on him if he you know varied from this at all and I realized that I was holding him to this standard when I was very imperfect and I had all these areas for growth and he wasn't doing that to me and I just realized I was being very unfair in the relationship to think that he was gonna be like this perfect dream guy that didn't exist and so I realized that a relationship and marriage is all about growing it's not about two perfect people getting married and living happily ever after. It's about a real journey and we're growing and we're struggling. We have our moments of tears and frustration, but we also have our times of joy and love and that love just transcends everything because we're so committed to each other. Um, something I've realized also from that conversation and other conversations is that people tend to have two basic outlooks on life. Uh, you could either have an open mindset or a fixed mindset. And even though I kind of had prided myself on having a very open mindset to life, being willing to try new things, travel places, uh, I realized that I hadn't cro had that cross over to my relationship with Ryan. And I had a very fixed mindset when it came to Ryan, um, even though I told myself I didn't. And that was kind of coming across in all of our interactions because I wasn't letting him grow. I wasn't letting him get outside of this little fixed box that I had placed him in. Um, but that growth from mindset is so essential when it comes to relationships uh, because you have to realize you, have, you need to be open to change. And if a relationship isn't open to change, you are going to become stagnant. And that is, I feel like, where so many people end up in divorce because they're not willing to change and grow and love each other through hard times. There's a verse from 2 Peter 3.18 that says, Grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. And that little phrase, grow in grace, is something that I've definitely you know, claimed and taken to heart in this journey, that I need to have grace um, and I also need to grow and extend that privilege to those around me, especially my husband. Uh, another thing that we've learned together is that you can't fix yourself on finding that perfect spouse. As I already said, like I had this mentality that there was this perfect dream guy, but really nobody will ever be that perfect dream guy because there isn't that perfect dream guy. Um, I think a lot of people want this perfect Hollywood romance where they meet and everything's happily ever after, um, but it's not life, it's not reality. And as much as those can make you feel like you have the fuzzy warmth, uh, it's not going to be real and lasting like a true relationship. And so we, if we were looking back and talking to our former, former selves, we probably would tell them this, hey, stop focusing on all the little nitty gritty, non-essential things that are on your perfect spouse list that really aren't important in the big picture. Focus on the essential things those things 
that really are important in your walk with God, in your relationship with each other. It's really important to have that spiritual foundation, uh, important to have the same trajectory in life and the same goals, the same purposes, that you'll be going the same way instead of pulling opposite directions. And then something else we found that's very helpful is to have some common shared interests. Now we know people are on a spectrum as far as how similar they are in personalities and interests, but definitely it makes it easier when you have things that you can enjoy doing together because spending time together really bonds you in your relationship, in your marriage, and can make your relationship have much, a much more solid foundation. Um, so we just would tell our former selves to have realistic expectations and to have that balanced mindset of growth instead of being fixed on inconsequential things. So going back to a story though, at first we had, the first time around, it was like we had lots of ups and downs and eventually just let us more down than up and we ended the relationship. Um, this time we still had ups and downs. It was still very much of a prayerful journey, thinking things through, processing, talking to counselors, people we looked up to. But it was also this story of persistence, where as a result of persistently pursuing gluttony, she started to relax more, she started to open up more, and she started to become more of who she was, blossomed under the flower of my love. Now, at this point, I was, I've been asked, thinking about, about it for a bit to ask her to be my wife, and I, I sensed that she was finally at the place that she could, she would, she would agree with and say yes. Um, so I was thinking about what to do, and I, I had a couple options. My first option to ask her was, in my romantic mindset, have her take take her on a boat cruise on the scenic lake that was local. Um, accidentally leave my phone on the boat, and then as we're driving away, realize this, and ask the boat driver, say, hey, uh, we left the phone on the boat. Uh, talk to him on the phone with Glusney's phone and the boat driver would say, of course it was on, in on the whole scoop, would say, yeah, uh, meet me at this place, I'll give you back the phone. And the place we met would obviously not have him there. It was gonna be a romantic cabin overlooking a lake with a fire going and romantic stuff in there. Well, as much as that sounded amazing to me, it didn't pan out at all because it was gonna be a very stormy day when I was thinking about taking her out. The boat driver was like, yeah, not, not worth it all. She's gonna get seasick, this is not a good idea. So my second option was to take her to a, to have her go skiing and then afterwards take her to a cabin on the ski slopes and ask her there. And I knew a couple of people who had cabins on, ski, on, this, on this particular ski school slope that we had passes to. But that wasn't panning out either. Everyone was saying, no, like, it won't work this weekend. And I remember just feeling heartbroken being like, okay, God, I feel you brought us to this place but now all the doors are closing. Like, is this not your will to end up married to her? If it's not, I was just resubmitting it back to God again and saying, I want this to go forward, but at the same time, if this isn't your will, I give it back to you. And in that moment, literally as I was praying that, a text came through on my phone saying, from somebody who had access to a cabin saying, hey, the cabin is available. Do you still want to use it this weekend? And I was like, Whoa, <laughs> which was kind of a theme that, and I mean, God could have taken the relationship away in his defense, but at the same time as that, that was submitting it deeper to him, submitting myself, my plans, my goals, my aspirations to him. And as I did, then he gave things back and I was following his will. And so I took her up on the ski slope, worst day of skiing for a while, cause it was rainy. Um, but afterwards took her to this place and she did say yes. and has only gotten better since then. Um, one of the verses that we claim as in our relationship was to delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Not just the desires that you may, may want a superficial level, but those deep desires that he gives you. And a godly relationship is an, is an amazing desire, something that he fulfilled. That's from Psalm 37. So we got engaged February. We married, I got married in July, end of July, and it's been great ever since then. Um, happily ever after kind of story. <laughs> Something you wanted to add? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, it has been wonderful. We've enjoyed nine months together being married, and it's been a great experience so far. We know we're babies in, in the married experience, but we've definitely been enjoying that. Our wedding day was beautiful. 
leading up to it, we had a lot of challenges, um, stressful situations. Uh, one of my friends told me once that they thought that planning a wedding would should be one of the biggest factors to prevent divorce because it takes so much work to plan a wedding that you want to never do that again. <laughs> and um, it's true, we had a lot of stress and a lot of time spent planning our wedding, but it all turned out beautifully and uh, we felt like it was very God honoring um, and was able to reach and witness to a lot of people. Um, but it definitely grew our relationship even during that time of engagement. Um, one thing I felt though, and I found that once I committed and said yes uh, to Mary Ryan, I found that I opened up to another level as well. Uh, emotionally, I was able to engage on an e even deeper level. And I wish I had done that even prior to our engagement because I had kept holding myself back and you know just creating these unnecessary barriers and so uh, I've enjoyed that freedom that's come from commitment and that's one thing I think that God designed he designed marriage to be a committed relationship and that commitment creates so much security and allows love to blossom in ways that it couldn't otherwise so that's something that we've definitely seen as a uh, definitely a growth area that's been for us even since we got engaged and God has really been teaching me many lessons on how to um, express love and to accept love as well because of some of my insecurities in the past of not feeling very attractive um, but our relationship it just has gotten sweeter day by day and we are just excited to embrace life together and see what he has for us uh, we've just learned so much more about God through our relationship. We've learned more about each other. And through it all, we've just been seeking to put Christ first. And that has repaid us in so many ways beyond what we could even mention here. And that besides being secure in our love for each other and that commitment, which is, is pivotal to marriage, we honestly believe that we should never even consider divorce. And there's a reason. It's not the fact that we think we're perfect and that we're going to have smooth sailing from here on out. It's more the fact that as we keep our eyes individually and together focused on Christ, we're going to become more like him, which the Christ, if you think about what he is, um, the individual that he was, the person that exhibited all these wonderful traits that if, if you were to marry her, it would be very attractive to you. That's the kind of individual that we want to become. We want to become more like Christ, We'll have less selfishness in our in our life as a result, which therefore we won't have all the as as much discord. All those we found that to be the case already. Um, we know from testimony of volume, testimonies volume five that hearts that are filled with the love of Christ can never get very far apart. And again in volume seven, make Christ first and last and best in everything. Constantly behold Him and your love for Him. Uh, will become deeper and stronger as it is submitted to the test of trial. And as your love for him increases, your love for each other will grow deeper and stronger. So in the, in the concept of marital relationships, as people are focused on Christ, their love for God should go stronger, their love for each other should go stronger, and that should last the test of time. So one of the things that we hope you take away today from the result of our conversation, our presentation, is the importance of biblical balance. That while there are definite principles to be followed, and if you're curious to hear more about those principles, you can look at Letters to Young Lovers, Adventist Home, books that we reference several times. But just even more importantly, putting God first, that last in everything that you do, in your relationship, in your life, and submitting yourself to whatever His will is in everything. For us, one of the quotes that helped us do this was this quote, and this is from Messages to Young People. Examine carefully to see if your married life would, bring, would be happy or inharmonious and wretched. Let the questions be raised, will this union help me heavenward? Will it increase my love for God? And will it enlarge my sphere of influence in this life? And here's what she said. If the answer is yes to those questions, will it help, help me heavenward, will it increase my love for God will enlarge my, year, my usefulness in this life. She says, if these reflections present no drawback, then the fear of God move forward. So if you don't know exactly what, what God's will is in your relationship, 
but you know it's answering those questions, then the fear of God, you can move forward. So our challenge is, which I guess you're going to share, is to be willing to knock on the God-given opportunities in the relationship world. It's to cling to Christ. It's a, we know it's a rich blessing to find someone that you are compatible with, that shares the journey of life, the ups and downs of it, and that is there for you, that has your back, and is pointing you closer to Christ. Yeah, we, we hope that this presentation that we've shared with you, being vulnerable with our story, sharing our ups and downs, that's been encouraging to you, that you've gleaned lessons from it, that you can apply to your own lives and your own relationships. We, like we have said before, um, no relationship is perfect and you don't need a relationship to be fulfilled in Christ. But we do know that God created relationships and marriage from the very beginning of time um, to be a blessing, to grow us uh, together, to grow us to be more like Christ. Um, and that was something that God instituted way back in Eden uh, with Adam and Eve, bringing them together to be beneficial to each other, to grow and feed off each other's strengths, to sharpen each other as the book of Proverbs says, you know, a friend sharpens um, each other as iron sharpens iron. And that's how our relationships should be. We should be continually making each other better, pointing each other to Christ. Um, and that's something that we've definitely been enjoying so far together. Um, they always say that uh, the first year of marriage is going to be the hardest year, but we definitely haven't found that to be true. We've had um, a wonderful experience overall. Yes, we've had our ups and downs. Yes, we've had our learning curves, but we've found that when you put Christ at the center of your relationship, uh, it is such a joyful experience and you can just blossom in each other's love and just be a, such an inspiration and encouragement to each other along the way that you would never have had if you were journeying on your own. And so that's something that we've really uh, embrace as we've started into this next chapter of our lives, the married chapter. Um, and we just want to encourage each one of you that God's going to guide you. He will lead you, whether it is into a relationship or not. He knows what's best for you, and he will bring you into whatever it is in his perfect timing. We just hope that you've been encouraged um, from our story, knowing that if God can work a miracle in our lives to bring us together, he can work in your specific situation, and he knows your specific situation. Submit to him, listen to him, and the fear of God move forward as he calls you. And we know that you will be richly blessed as you do so. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you so much that you are a God who loves us, that you are a God who has a plan, and that we can find our contentment in you. We also know that you created relationships to be joyful as well. And so we just pray that you might continue to guide all of our listeners, that they might especially make you the forefront of their lives. And that as they do, you might give them the guidance that they are seeking. And we just thank you for listening, for answering in advance, and for being our God and our wonderful Savior. We praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.